Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a Positively Balanced Conversation. I have with me today Julia, and I'm going to let Julia tell you all about herself because what she does is so important for women, and I am just over the moon to have her on here. Um, <laughs> Julia, please just let us know who you are, what you do. Tell us all the good stuff. Sure. My name is Julia. My business is Newborn Mothers, and um it, 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 to sum it up very quickly, what I do is train postpartum doulas uh, and really the areas of, of passion and, and obsession that I have are um, started with Ayurveda, which is Indian medicine. So learning about and has broadened more to learning about traditional cultural postpartum care all over the world. Um, and then later on in my career, I learned more about um, baby brain, which is about the actual neurological changes that we go through when we become mothers and i feel like the combination of those things the kind of very cutting edge you know 21st century science alongside these really um nourishing ancient traditions um can give people a radically different experience of the transformation to motherhood i love that and you already brought up so many things that i want to talk about over <laughs> Big, uh, the big question here. So you work with a lot of postpartum doulas, you train them, and they go into the world and they help moms after they've delivered their babies. And, you know, during COVID right now, we're seeing this huge gap, this huge hole, where moms are being sent home with their babies. And instead of being welcomed in by a lot of different family and friends, they're kind of finding themselves on an island. And your postpartum doulas and the people who you train, they can fill that gap. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. I'd actually say it's, it's not like a new problem. I think new mothers have been mm -hmm. isolated in our culture for a long time. I know when I had my babies, I was very lonely. Um, and I know a lot of people have babies now without their extended family around, or even sometimes they don't really know their neighbors or they've just moved to an area so they don't have a lot of friends. Um, we don't really have, although we have this huge urge still, which I think is very like a human urge to celebrate new babies and new families, we don't have a kind of culture of care, a protocol or a framework that kind of allows people to know how to be in that space in a really supportive way. Then the pandemic came along and I think it's, you know, like with all the things, it's just revealed all of the cracks and this loneliness, this isolation and the mental health problems that it causes are just like so glaringly obvious to everyone that you can't just think, oh, I'm the only one feeling this way. You realize that this is a systemic problem. Um, and, and of course, we're not really all in this together because quarantine does affect um, different people in different ways. And the research that I've read very early on, as soon as that, you know, in March, when everything started slowing down, um, I started looking into the research of the mental health impacts of quarantine. And they show that the most vulnerable people to quarantine are people who are pregnant, women who are young and who have one baby. And I was like, that's all of the people I, I work with are the ones who are going to be most adversely affected by this. But the other really important thing that that research found, and this was done not during this pandemic, but during other epidemics um, throughout time. But the really important thing to remember is the one thing that made women feel a lot better and come through this time uh, a lot more, with a lot more ease and grace was actually thanking them and acknowledging the sacrifice. So knowing that as a mom, if you're being forced to stay home and it's really hard for you, knowing that this is actually saving lives, this is really important and beautiful gift um, and that we really thank and acknowledge that, that effort um, can make people feel a lot better about having to do something really, really hard. It's a really hard year. Um, so I think that's kind of, you know, when it all, all started, that was, that was the most helpful research that I found. And I love that because it's acknowledging, right? Because like you, you mentioned that at the beginning, this isn't a new problem. Um, we get kind of isolated, especially after kind of the newborn, like, oh, you had a baby. And then like a couple of weeks later, like, uh, it's not like they forget about you, but the newness wears off. Um, that's You're not, expected to be back to normal. Then, yeah, right? that's yeah. not a new thing. But yeah. and now all this pandemic thing, it's kind of bringing that to the service. And 
it's acknowledging that, hey, you are doing great things. You're going through this. And I, I love that. That's great. So um, my next question is kind of in that same line. You know, you're talking about postpartum doulas being able to fill that goal, uh, fill that void and kind of that space. How are they able to do that during the pandemic? Yeah, well, it really depends on, you know, where and when you are, because I think everywhere in the world at some point in this year or next year will experience some kind of lockdowns um, to varying degrees, depending on the severity of the situation, but also the complacency of the government, you know, so it's, it's, it's very unknown what circumstance every individual mother is living in. But what we do know is that there's, um, you know, there's, a, there's, physical support in your home that may or may not be available to you, but there is always still that emotional connection that you can get through and mindset change and education that you can get online. So, you know, traditionally a doulas would come, a postpartum doula would come to your home, should listen to you, should make you a cup of tea, should maybe like just support you through breastfeeding challenges or managing your visitors or boundaries or, you know, all of the things that come up. Um, some doulas have special skills in massage or herbs or cooking, um, you know, so they can actually do more physical work with you. Um, so that's all really important. And a lot of places, even during the, you know, some of the more strong uh, shutdowns and restrictions, this work has been able to continue um, when you can really show that it's necessary. So I know in some parts of the world, if you can get a, um, you know, like a, a note from your GP saying that it's really important that you have this care, that you've just had a baby and that you're at, at increased risk of mental health challenges, then oftentimes that, that um, means that your doula can get an exemption and can still come and work with you. Um, but again, it, you know, you really have to look at your local area and local situation and what you and your doula are comfortable with. Um, so if you can't get that kind of support, what is still available to you is um, some really beautiful offers, which actually I find that a lot of new mums feel quite lonely and isolated. A lot of the times there's barriers to participating in public life. For example, when your baby's sick or if you have a baby that cries in the car a lot, um, you know, or if you're just really tired and you just can't face the thought of having to get dressed and, and go somewhere to socialize, you know, like, so a lot of mums face these barriers to participation in, in public life anyway. But the good thing about the pandemic is there's now this whole host of online stuff that didn't exist before. Um, so now you can get like telehealth services and, um, you know, things like, um, mother's circles you can access online. So you can be at home in your pajamas. You don't have to wake the baby up from their nap. Um, you know, and that can be actually much more accessible. So ideally, of course, we'd have face-to-face -face contact. That's, that would be great. But failing that, I think there's a lot more opportunities for women to connect and get the support that they need. So if, you know, if I was having a baby right now, I'd be looking around at local doulas and what online stuff they can offer. Some of them can still do meals, delivery. Um, some of them are running online mother's groups, you know, and, and I don't just mean like, you know, sometimes mother's groups can be not very positive, but when you have someone facilitating that group and making sure that it's really safe, non-judgmental, that everyone gets a chance to share and to listen, um, you know, that can be a really profoundly, um, I don't know, affirming and transformational space, a really safe place to go through this, this huge transition. So yeah, I hope that helps with some kind of practical ways that people can get support. No, oh, that's perfect. Because I like how you said that we've been able to get some good things out of this. At least we've been able to find new ways of supporting new moms and just make sure, making sure that they are heard. That it's not like they're out on that island by themselves. They're still being heard, even though maybe we can't do that face to face. I love that. Yeah, and I think that's important to keep in mind because there's a lot of people in life who are vulnerable in other ways. For example, they might have disabilities that make it difficult for them to, you know, generally go to a mother's circle or they might live in a rural or remote area where they can't just like drive to town and meet up with other mums. Um, so in some ways, it's been quite um, a, a, a leveler, you know, for everyone that we've realised what it feels like to be unable to access 
you know, basic social support and friendship and that kind of thing. So I think we can really think about this in terms of our whole system and how can we do better for, for everyone. Um, and, and I hope that we grow through this um, to become a more inclusive, more supportive, more democratic society. I agree. I completely agree. So before I let you go, I have to ask you this question because you brought it up earlier and I think it's so key for moms to know. So you're talking about baby brain, mommy brain, baby brain, um, about that postpartum period where you're just, you're not all the way there. And I loved, I, whenever I took your free training a while back, I loved your approach to this because you've done so much research in this. And so I would like you to just briefly touch on that. Just give moms kind of a just about what it is and um, that we're not all crazy after having a baby. <laughs> yeah, totally. So in a nutshell, um, the word, so I think you use mummy brain more in the States, don't you? Whereas I think in uh -huh. Australia and the UK and maybe Canada, because I learned this from a Canadian, um, Christina Smiley, um, but we generally use the word baby brain, but it's the same thing. Gotcha. Yes. And there are computer algorithms that can show, that can find with 100% accuracy, whether it's looking at the scan of a mom's brain or a non mom's brain. So this is how much your brain changes. It changes physically on a biological level. Um, the, the downside is this kind of idea has been hijacked by, you know, let's call it the patriarchy as a negative mm. thing. Like we think that we're dumb, we're ditzy, we're forgetful, you know, it's not, we don't have a positive framework or understanding or paradigm for that transformation. And I think one of the most useful things that I've learned is that baby brain is actually a good thing, um, that there are a lot of benefits of baby brain that set us up to be happier, healthier mums and also in our general life, you know. So things like um, being more empathetic, reading nonverbal cues, um, being better at assessing risk, these are things that are obviously useful in mum life, but we can also see how those things can then also be useful in public life, in workplaces, you know, as leaders in our community. Um, and so we really need to embrace these changes as strengths rather than feeling like there's something wrong with us because we don't kind of operate in the same way. It's a new, it's a new operating system. That's often how I describe it. So that's a nutshell. It's a big topic. Um, and I think if people want to learn more, I've written a lot about this in my book, newborn mothers, when a baby is born, so is a mother. So that's probably like a good place to get a primer on this. If you want a little bit more detail. <laughs> and I can say from personal experience, cause I love that book. It's a great read. Well worth it. But thanks for that because I love how you take that positive spin on it because we do uh, we kind of were like, oh, yeah, it's just my mommy brain or my baby brain. Like, I just can't remember anything. And we forget how beneficial it is, how much it helps us and mom life. So thank you for that. And thank you for coming on and for sharing your wisdom with us today. And I just appreciate your time. My pleasure. I'm just going to add one more thing about baby yeah. brain because we were talking yeah. about the pandemic. But I think we're all going through some collective baby brain right now. So there's research that shows that our brain plasticity increases during things like um, famines and emergencies, times when we have less food intake and more exercise output, it increases our brain plasticity and that's so that we can adapt to crisis. And I think that probably there might be some collective baby brain going on right now. So if people who are not new moms are feeling this as well, um, you know, maybe that's what's happening to us all. So I think yeah. I read that too. I, I was reading something about that and they were talking about how a lot of people, they just feel different, they feel weird. And so maybe they are getting the mommy brain. So they're getting a taste of. Um, yeah, I think so. Man. Yeah. So thank you so much for having me on to talk about this stuff. And um, yeah, thank you for all the beautiful work that you're doing um, to support mums. Well, thank you so much. And if anybody wants to find you, uh, where should they go? at newbornmothers.com. Perfect. That's easy. I like it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it, Julia. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.